Freddy is one lucky guy. He works at a chocolate factory as a night guard. Once, he was checking the factory as usual. He noticed that someone had stolen several boxes with exclusive chocolate candies. The next morning, Freddy questioned three suspects. Jason, a pastry cook, said that he'd finished his shift at 7 p.m. and gone home right away. His wife couldn't confirm that he stayed indoors all night. Harry, a delivery guy, said, I don't eat chocolate at all. Even the smell of it gives me a severe rash. And Peter, a cleaner, said, Yesterday, I was cleaning the warehouse. I found one chocolate candy on the floor and ate it. I'm so sorry. Please don't fire me. Who is the thief? Harry. He's standing in a room with a bowl of melted chocolate without any protection. He would have a rash if his allergy was real. Another working day at the chocolate factory. Jason decided to prank Freddy and covered a raw chicken egg with a layer of chocolate. Then he wrapped it and put it among real chocolate eggs on a tray. When Jason brought the chocolate eggs, Freddy spotted the fake one immediately. Can you figure it out? The real chocolate eggs are hollow inside, so they were rolling all over the tray when Jason was walking. But the raw egg is heavier, and it didn't move much. Well, Freddy decided to pay Jason back. He dressed up as a ghost to scare him. But suddenly, several real ghosts appeared in the room. Can you figure out which of these ghosts is Freddy? This guy over here, he's the only ghost who is not transparent at all. One evening, the factory was celebrating its anniversary. The management organized a party. All employees participated in a karaoke competition. Most of them all sang incredibly well and received gifts and flowers. But only two of the best singers, Nancy and Betsy, made it to the final. They prepared to face each other in one more round. But suddenly, Betsy fell to the floor, unconscious. Doctors claimed that she had been poisoned. But all the participants of the competition had eaten exactly the same food. Besides, the police checked the dishes, and they were okay. Can you guess what happened? Someone poisoned Betsy's flowers. Next day, Freddy came to work as usual. He looked around and exclaimed, Eh, wait a minute! Who's brought a cat to the chocolate factory? No pets are allowed here! Can you see any animals? Here it is! The cat got scared and ran away to another room. Freddy followed it. Can you spot the cat now? It's hiding over there. And again, Freddy failed to catch the cat. It ran out of the building and hid in the garden. Can you help the guy find the cat? Ah, the poor animal is over there. Freddy caught the cat and found a small note attached to its collar. It had contact information. Freddy called the cat owner, but no one answered the phone. So, after work, Freddy took the cat and went to the address mentioned in the note. It was a creepy castle. The door was locked and required a password. Can you help Freddy crack the code using this hint? The password is rainbow. A gloomy old man greeted Freddy inside the castle. Freddy expected that he would thank him for bringing the cat back. But the old man began to laugh evilly and locked all the ways out. Then he said, If you manage to complete three tasks I give you, you will get a million dollars. But if you fail, you'll stay in my castle forever. Here's the first task. Help me find my glasses among all these vegetables. 
Can you help Freddy? Here they are. The next task from the old man was to cook a potion and do it in the correct order. He gave Freddy this recipe. Can you help the guy? First of all, you gotta put curry. Then go for blueberries to make the potion look greenish. And finally, add tomatoes to make the potion look brown. As for these vegetables, Freddy doesn't need them. And the third task is to find a book in this messy room. Can you see it? It's half hidden inside the sofa. The old man gave Freddy his money, showed him the exit, and disappeared. But when Freddy tried to leave, he realized that the door was locked. It had a combination lock. Freddy found this mysterious note nearby. He has to get this right or he might stay trapped for a long time. What code will open the door? Two, three, six, one. Each number corresponds to the number of circles in the first set of numbers. Now, Freddy was free to go. As soon as Freddy got out of the creepy castle, he decided to quit his job and go on a trip around the globe. First of all, he took a flight to Spain. On board the plane, he met Gloria. He asked what country she was from. Instead of answering, Gloria showed him this puzzle. Can you guess the country? That's right, she's from Ireland. Then Gloria asked Freddy what country he was from, and he showed her this puzzle. Can you guess his country? Cuba. Freddy landed in Madrid and went for a walk. He hadn't rented any hotel in advance, so he just wandered around the city, searching for a nice place to stay. Suddenly, Freddy noticed this cute little hotel and entered it. Big mistake. Why? See this zombie in the window? This place doesn't look safe. As soon as Freddy entered the creepy hotel, the door slammed behind his back. The guy saw three doors leading to freedom. Venomous spiders were crawling behind the first door. Behind the second door, arrows were flying at head height. And behind the third door, there was a black hole. Which door should Freddy choose? Can you help him escape? He should choose the second door. He can crawl under the arrows. After his adventure, Freddy decided to have lunch in the local cafe. But something's definitely wrong here. Can you figure out what it is? Look at this window. The view of the street is upside down. The waiter came over to Freddy to get his order. But suddenly, a woman at the next table began to shout, Help me! Someone has put cockroaches in my soup! The cafe manager questioned three suspects. The cook said that he had prepared the soup as usual. It was okay when he passed the dish to the waiter. The waiter said he hadn't touched the soup. He just served it to the woman and switched to another client, Freddie. The woman's husband said, I wasn't there when my wife got the soup. I was washing my hands in the bathroom. Can you tell who's guilty? No one. Take a look at the ceiling. The cockroaches crawled out of the ventilation and several of them fell into the lady's soup. Freddy used a special app to rent a luxury apartment in Madrid. He found three options that he really liked. Mariana offered a cozy two-story studio with a beautiful view. 
Diego had a penthouse near a park. And Camilla offered a high-tech villa. Which option should Freddy choose? This penthouse has a cracked glass roof, which is extremely unsafe. As for the third option, see the Eiffel Tower? Camilla's high-tech villa is in Paris, not in Madrid. So, Freddy should choose the first studio. Freddy invited Mariana for a walk in the park. They walked a lot and got very tired. They decided to lie down on the grass and rest. Freddy woke up an hour later. Mariana had disappeared. Freddy started looking for her. Half an hour later, he fell into a big pit. It began to rain. The guy realized that the pit was going to get flooded. That was a big problem. Freddy couldn't swim. He found some stuff in the pit. A rope, a ball, and a bucket. How can Freddy get out? The ball will float up to the surface. And so will Freddy if he holds on to it. Freddy kept looking for Mariana. He came across a wizard's castle. The wizard had caught the girl and turned her into a frog. Freddy had to help her. The guy and the Mariana the frog found the wizard's book of potions. It described all the necessary antidotes. But first, the guys needed to understand which potion the wizard had used on Mariana. Freddy looked through the book. The first recipe included a slice of pumpkin, a slice of green apple, an orange wedge, and half a kiwi. The second recipe required a chamomile petal, three garlic cloves, and half of a red apple. The third potion should contain an orange wedge, a garlic clove, a banana peel, and a chamomile petal. Which potion did the wizard use? Take a look at the ingredients on the shelves. They only match the third recipe. Freddy helped Mariana turn back into a human. The wizard got very angry and teleported Freddy to jail. The guy was desperate. He had no idea how to escape. Suddenly, a creepy man opened the door and said, Come on, I'm going to help you escape. Freddy followed him, but he slipped, fell to the floor, and hit his head. Freddy woke up in a pit. He didn't remember how he got there. If he went to the left, he would end up in the bathroom. If he went to the right, he would have to crawl through a tunnel filled with toxic waste that was leading outside. Which way should he choose? Freddy should go to the right. If he chooses the left corridor, he will end up in jail again. Look, this bathroom is on the territory of the jail. Freddy escaped, took a shower, and called Mariana right away. The wizard picked up the phone and said, I have created enough evil clones of Mariana. (laughs) I don't need her anymore. You can take her home now. Freddy rushed back to the wizard's castle and saw four Marianas. Can you help him find the real girl? This Mariana has claws instead of nails. She looks like a werewolf. This one has very sharp teeth and ears. She's probably a vampire. This lady has scales on her face. She's a mermaid. So the real Mariana is over there. Alrighty, it's Math O'Clock here, and I have a couple of fun riddles for you to solve. Let's start with a cheesy one. Here's a circle. How many sides does the circle have? There are two, the inside and the outside. It was Aviana's birthday, and she went to buy herself an ebook she'd been dreaming about. The ebook and the case cost $150 in total. If the ebook was $100 more expensive than the case, how much did each item cost? Alright, let's say the case cost X. Then, the ebook cost X plus 100. Together, they cost $150. So, X, the case, plus X plus 100, the ebook, are equal to 150. 
Now, solve the equation. 2x is equal to 150 minus 100, or 50. So, 1x is equal to 25. So, the case costs $25, and the ebook cost $125. Well, that adds up. Now, to celebrate her birthday, Aviana wants to go to the movies. She has two friends whom she wants to take with her. A movie ticket costs $8. What is cheaper? Go to the movies with each friend separately or with the two of them together. Of course, it's cheaper to go with the two of them together. If she goes there two times separately with each friend, she'll have to buy a ticket for herself twice. So she'll buy four tickets. Oh. But if they go together, she will only buy three tickets. Yes! Five friends met for the first time in five years. Each one shook hands with each person in the group, but only once. How many handshakes were made? No handshakes were repeated. Let's see it like this. The first friend shook the hands of the four remaining people once. Then the second friend had already shared a handshake with the first person, so they shook hands with three more people. The third friend had shaken hands with the first two, so he shook hands with two more people. And then, finally, friends 4 and 5 shook hands too. 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 is equal to 10. So there were 10 handshakes. Brinley has to sneak into her mom's computer to delete some emails she had accidentally sent her. Ooh. Mom has a poor memory, so she always has notes with her passcodes. Luckily, the note is right on the desk again. What's the passcode? Every number equals the number of circles in it. So the last number is equal to 3. It's a 5-digit number. So try 82193. Danica and Elora are best friends who live in different parts of town but study in the same college. Every morning they leave their houses at the same time and first meet at a cafe to drink some coffee before classes. Danica goes there by car and Elora goes by bike. When they met, which girl was closer to Elora's home? When they meet, they're in the same spot, so no one is closer than the other one. Mrs. Marshall owns a factory that produces office desks. Four workers can build four desks in four hours. If she hires four more people, how many desks will eight workers produce in eight hours? If four workers produce four desks in four hours, it means that each worker produces one desk in four hours. So, eight workers will produce eight desks in four hours, or 16 desks in eight hours. Maya has four pens, a blue one, a black one, a red one, and a green one. They lay on the table in some order. Here are some hints. 1. The green one is somewhere in the middle. 2. The blue one is to the left of the black one and to the right of the red one. 3. The red pen is right next to the blue one. So, what's the order of the pens? Green is somewhere in the middle. Since blue has some other colors on both sides of it, it means it's in the middle too. Let's decide which one is where. If the green pen is in position 2, then the blue one takes position 3. We know that the blue one is on the left of the black one, so black takes position 4, and red must be in position 1. But it doesn't fit, because the last condition is that the red and blue ones are next to each other. So let's switch the green and blue. Now blue is right next to red, but it's still to the left of black. So the right order is red, blue, green, black. Yvonne cuts one baguette into four pieces in 12 seconds. How much time will she need to cut the same baguette into eight pieces? Twenty-eight seconds. To cut a baguette into four pieces, she must make three cuts. If it takes her 12 seconds to make three cuts, it means that she makes one cut in four seconds. So, if she now wants to cut it into eight pieces, 
she needs to make 7 cuts. So, 7 cuts, 4 seconds each, would take 28 seconds. Ellery came back home with her term grades. She got all A's but 3, all B's but 4, and all C's but 5. So, how many A's, B's, and C's did she get? Let's start with A's. They are all but 3. So, there are 3 B's and C's together. Which is either 2 C's and 1 B, or 2 B's and 1 C. Let's start with the first option. If it's the case, there are 4 A's and C's. If there are 2 C's, then she has 2 A's too. I mean, also. The condition all C's but 5 tells us that if there's 1 B, there must also be 4 A's, not 2. So, it can't be. If there are 2 B's and 1 C, then from all B's but 4 and 1 C, there are 3 A's. From all C's but 5 and 2 B, there again must be 3 A's. So, he has 3 A's, 2 B's, and 1 C. Nice work, Ellery! You are outside a room with 3 switches in the off position. One of the switches turns on the light bulb in the room. You can turn on as many switches as you want, but you can only walk into the room once. How can you find out which switch turns on the light? Turn two random switches on and wait a couple of minutes. Then turn one of them off and walk into the room. If the light is still on, then the controlling switch is the one you left in the on position. If there's no light, touch the light bulb. If it's hot, then the controlling switch is the one you just turned off. If the light bulb is cold, that switch is the one you didn't turn on. Every Sunday, Mrs. Adams gives her daughter's pocket money. Half of the whole amount goes to the oldest daughter, Stella. The second sister, Ashley, gets half of the amount Stella gets. Eleanor gets one-sixth of the total amount, and the remaining $10 goes to the youngest daughter, Sierra. How much money does Mrs. Adams give away? Seems like Stella gets one half of the money, Ashley gets half of a half, which is one quarter of the original sum, and Eleanor gets one sixth. They're all a fraction of twelves. So Ella gets six twelves, Ashley gets three twelves, and Eleanor gets three twelves. Together, it's 11 twelves, which means that Sierra gets 1 twelfth, which is 10 bucks. So Stella gets $60, Ashley gets $30, Eleanor gets $20, and the whole sum is $120. Hey, if I were Sierra, I would complain. Annabeth is going by train to visit her best friend, Brooke. The train is 500 feet long, and it's moving at a speed of 500 feet a minute. And it's now traveling through a 500-foot-long tunnel. How long will it take for the train to go through the tunnel? When the train goes into the tunnel, it will take exactly one minute for its head to reappear on the other side. But the rest of the train should get out of there too. Once the head of the train is out, the back of the train just entered the tunnel, and it'll need another minute to travel through the tunnel. So the train will need two minutes in total. An elf hired a fairy to take care of his garden for a week. As a daily payment, the fairy takes one inch of a candy cane. The elf has a 7-inch candy cane in one piece, but the fairy wants to be paid every day because fairies don't trust elves. The elf has a knife that can only make two cuts. How can he manage? He should make two cuts and divide the candy cane into the pieces of 1 7th, 2 7ths, and 4 7ths. The first day, he'll give her the 1 7th piece. The second day, he'll give her the 2 7th piece and will take the 1 7th piece back. After the third day, he will give her the 1 7th piece back. After the fourth day, he gets back the 1 7th piece and 2 7th pieces and gives her 1 4 7th piece instead. Then he gives her 1 7th. On the sixth day, instead of 1 7th, she gets the 2 7th piece. And on the last day, he gives her the final 1 7th piece. Of course, this whole thing goes kablooey if the fairy eats the candy during the week. 
Well, it's the fairy's grandpa's birthday today. She wants to visit him and bring him birthday candy canes. Her grandpa lives in a different town, and there are three gates to cross on the way. At every gate, there is a guard. To cross, the fairy has to pay a fee of half of the candy cane she has. But she gets one candy cane back. What's the minimum number of candy canes the fairy should take from home to make sure she arrives at her grandpa's with two candy canes for him? She should take just two. At every gate, she'll have to give away half, which is one, and she'll be getting that one back. Ooh, tasty! Brad has recently downloaded a dating app and found three beautiful ladies right away. Fiona is an art dealer from San Francisco. She has never had a serious relationship before, but she would like to settle down. Mary is a vegan, yoga teacher, and human rights enthusiast. She loves French cheese and enjoys watching sunsets on the pier. Betty is a firefighter. In her spare time, she writes songs and performs them with her music band. Brad likes them all equally. Can you give him advice on who he should invite on a real offline date? Look at this wedding picture in Fiona's profile. She's the bride, but she claimed she had never been married. Mary is also a liar. Vegans don't eat cheese, so Brad should text Betty. As soon as Betty received a text from Brad, she ran to the bathroom to get ready for the date. She got her hair done and took out several lipsticks. Betty is a tomboy, which is why she uses makeup very rarely. Can you help her choose the right lipstick for her date? This lipstick is way too old. Look at the date. It was made in 1999 and expired a long time ago. And there's a spider inside this lipstick. Betty should choose the second one. Meanwhile, Brad took a shower and prepared to put on his favorite white shirt. But when he pulled it out of the closet, he discovered that someone had stained it with chocolate. Brad questioned his three brothers. Jim said he'd been cooking dinner in the kitchen. He didn't even come into Brad's room that day. Bill said that he entered Brad's room about an hour before to borrow a charger for his phone. And Mike said he'd been partying with his girlfriend all day and had just returned home. Who is lying? Bill, if he borrowed a charger one hour ago, why is his phone still at 1%? Brad decided to prank his brother Bill and cut two holes in his t-shirt. How many holes does the t-shirt have now? Eight. These two holes are cut through the t-shirt. That makes four holes in total. Plus, there are two holes for the arms, one for the head, and one at the bottom of the t-shirt. Betty and Brad met in a restaurant. It was love at first sight. A waiter came over and said, Good evening. What would you like to eat? Betty answered, I'd like something that is red, but it can be green at times, and sometimes it's yellow. The waiter cracked her riddle immediately and brought her the food she'd ordered. What was it? An apple. Brad liked the game and offered the waiter one more riddle. It can be red and it can be green. It can be black or it can be white. It tastes delicious with other dishes, but not on its own. In a minute, the waiter brought Brad his order. Have you guessed what it was? Pepper. After dinner, Brad and Betty went for a walk in the park. They were so focused on each other that they got completely lost. They began looking for a way out and came to this weird crossroad. There were four different roads. Each road had a sign, but the signs had no words. Still, Brad and Betty knew which path to take. What about you? This one. It's the only right hand. 
Five months later, Betty moved in with Brad. They shared a family house with Brad's three brothers. One day, Betty got a new longboard as a gift for Brad's birthday. It was a surprise, so she locked it in a basement and went to buy some groceries for dinner. When she returned, the longboard wasn't there. She realized that one of the four brothers must have pulled a prank on her. Brad said he hadn't seen anything. Jim said he'd noticed the longboard while walking past the basement, but he'd been in a hurry to get to his training. Mike said he had spent the day downstairs baking cookies for his scientific club. And Bill said he'd been on a business trip. Who is behind the mysterious disappearance? Jim, Betty locked the room. It means he couldn't see the longboard unless he broke in. Brad's brothers came home after work and met Brad in the kitchen. The guy was anxious because Betty was missing. The brothers asked him to tell them everything in detail. Brad said, well, she made me a birthday cake with ice cream this morning. I wanted to try it, but she said we'd eat it in the evening. We argued a bit. Then I went to work. When I got back, she was gone. As soon as the brothers heard Brad's story, they called him a liar. Why? He said Betty had made the cake in the morning. Then why hasn't the ice cream melted yet? Brad got a job as a chemistry teacher. Wait, who stole his money? Brad found only one person's fingerprints on the wallet, his own. He questioned his three colleagues. Math teacher Jennifer said that she'd been having lunch. History teacher Becky said, I didn't feel well yesterday, so I went home early. And English teacher Sam said that he'd been checking his students' homework in his classroom. Who is the thief? The history teacher. She used gloves to steal the money and then threw them in the trash. Betty and Brad were walking down the street. Suddenly, they met a weird-looking guy. He introduced himself as a magician and asked, Do you guys want to get rich? Crack this three-digit code. And the money is yours. He gave them a heavy suitcase with a combination lock and a piece of paper with this riddle. A. 548. In the first line, one number is correct and well placed. B. 530. In the second line, nothing is correct. C. 157. In the third line, two numbers are correct but in the wrong places. D. 806. In the fourth line, one number is correct but in the wrong place. E. 647. And in the fifth line, one number is correct but in the wrong place. Can you help the guys? You can use different approaches to crack this riddle. The easiest one is to start with statement B. None of these digits are correct. Therefore, we can exclude numbers 5, 3, and 0. In statement C, we're told that two numbers are correct, but in the wrong places. We can conclude that numbers 1 and 7 are in the final code, but we still don't know the order. Now let's take a look at statements D and E. In both of them, one number is correct, but in the wrong place. We already know that 7 is in the code. It means the remaining digit can't be 6. Then it must be 8. Look again at statement A. Since the correct number is 8, it must also be correctly placed. In statement C, we have two correct numbers, but they're in the wrong places. Since the third position in the code is already occupied by 8, we can only have one option. 7 should go first, and 1 should be second. Then the correct code is 718. Brad and Betty opened the suitcase. It had $50 million inside. They quit their jobs and went on vacation right away. They checked into a fancy hotel and went to their room to get some rest after a long, exhausting flight. In the evening, they went downstairs to have dinner in a cute Chinese restaurant. But one of the guests is not human. Can you spot who it is? Take a closer look at this guy's plate. It doesn't look like human food at all. When Betty and Brad returned to their room after the meal, they discovered that all their money and gadgets were gone. Oh, no. The hotel security manager asked three guests the same question. What were you doing within the last two hours? Dan said that he had spent all evening in the swimming pool area. Courtney said she'd been chilling in her room with her besties and had nothing to do with the robbery. 
and Henry said he had just returned from a party in another part of the city. Who's the thief? Courtney, the security manager, didn't mention any robbery, but she started making excuses straight away. Brad decided to jump with a parachute, but he landed not as successfully as he had expected. As soon as Betty found out about the accident, she rushed to the hospital. In the room, she saw an unconscious person, completely in bandages. She asked a doctor who was passing by, Sir, please let me in. It's my boyfriend. But the doctor told her that the patient was a woman. Who is right? It's a man. Look at the name tag on his bed. Brad got well pretty quickly, and Becky took him on a romantic trip to an ancient castle. They were walking around the place and taking pictures, but suddenly, all the doors slammed shut. The guys were trapped inside. Brad found a door with a four-digit combination lock, and Betty found this piece of paper on the floor. Can you help the guys crack the code and escape? The correct code is STOP. Take the first letter of September, the sixth letter of August, the first letter of October, and the second letter of April, and you'll get the word STOP. <laughs> I've got a tricky riddle for you today. This is the question Elon Musk asks people who come to job interviews. Do you think you can solve it? Okay, let's check. I am somewhere on the surface of Earth. From the place where I stand, I walk one mile south, then one mile west, and then one mile north. I end up exactly where I started. Where am I? That's it! The interview has started! Will you get hired by Elon Musk? You can pause the video if you need more time to think. Mm. The trickiest part is that there may be several answers. One of them is that you're at the North Pole. Let's draw the trajectory. From the North Pole, you walk one mile south, then one mile west, and after that, one mile north. Look, it takes you back exactly where you are. It doesn't work with the South Pole, because from there, you can't go south. But how about drawing a circle close to the South Pole, which is exactly one mile long? Now, go up from that circle, one mile to the north. Right, we can start here. So from this spot, we go one mile south, we reach the circle, then we can go one mile west, walking along the entire circle and ending up in the same spot. After that, we go one mile to the north again and end up exactly where we started. It can get even better. Let's draw a circle near the south pole that's one half mile long. Again, you can start one mile away from it. You go one mile to the south, reach the circle, go one mile west, you'll end up where you started, but you'll need to walk around the circle two times. The same works with a circle that's one-third of a mile long. You'll just walk around it three times in a row. It works with pretty much any other length of the circle, as long as it's 1 divided by n miles long, where n is a whole number. This way, after walking one mile south, you'll reach the circle, go around it n times, and then move one mile north. Every time, you'll come back to where you started. So, have you passed the interview? If not, no worries. I have some other riddles for you to practice. Off we go! A monkey, a squirrel, and a lizard are about to race up a coconut palm. Who will be the first to reach bananas? None of them! They'll be climbing the coconut tree. There are no bananas there. Leah, Danny, Callie, and Rhea stand one behind another this way. Leah can see Danny and Callie. Danny can see Callie. And Callie and Rhea can't see anyone. They're all wearing hats. The girls only know there are two black hats and two white hats. Any of them can shout out the color of their hat. And if it's right, they will all win. Who's going to be the first to figure out the color of her hat? Leah sees Danny and Callie. If both of them had hats of the same color, she'd know that for sure her hat was a different color. But they are black and white, so she can't be sure about her own hat. It means she'll stay silent. 
Danny will understand that since Leah is silent, her and Callie's hats are of different colors. She can see that Callie's hat is black, so she'll understand that her hat must be white. Kiana was having a vacation, and she decided to walk from Los Angeles to San Francisco to clear up her mind a bit. Wow, that's a walk. She only had one backpack and some money with her. Halfway through, she met three other travelers walking toward her, and each of them had a pet, a cat, a dog, and a guinea pig. How many creatures were walking to San Francisco? Just one, Kiana. The other travelers and their animals were going in the opposite direction, from San Francisco to Los Angeles. Oakley was participating in a game show. If she got the last question right, she'd get a big amount of money. Look at this picture of a bus that's somewhere on the road between New York and Boston. The question is, which city is the bus heading for? It seems like there's nothing in the picture that can help you figure it out. But it's not exactly so. You can see no door. It means that it's on the other side of the bus. And since bus doors are always on the right side, the vehicle must be facing us with its left side. This means it's going to Boston. Esme was having a walk in the forest and got lost. She tried to find her way back home, but instead, she stumbled across a witch's house. She petted the cat she saw there and asked the witch to take her home. The witch was busy cleaning and had a riddle for Esme. There were five parts of a chain, and each of them had three links. What was the minimum number of links the witch should open to make it a one-piece chain? If you try to attach all the parts of a chain to one another, you'll need four links. But there's a way to fulfill the tasks by using just three links. Take one of the pieces and open its links. Then use them to connect the remaining four parts of the chain. A long time ago, in one old kingdom, there was a king who made a bizarre law every Friday. His new law was that every man in the kingdom had to shave off his beard. Otherwise, this person would be exiled. But in the kingdom, there was just one hairdresser. Everyone went to this professional, but the hairdresser had no one to go to. Mm. Still, everyone managed to follow the rules, and no one was exiled. How is it possible? Well, the hairdresser was a woman. She didn't have a beard to shave. Mm. Another week, another law. This time, the king was in a good mood. So he declared, today I partially forgive the prisoners in our jail. They'll have to serve only half of their sentence. But there were three prisoners who had been given a life sentence. How can you make sure that they serve only half of their sentence? They should be released every other day. This day they'll spend one day in jail, the next in freedom. Then they go back, and so on, for the rest of their lives. This way, half of the time, they will be free. Yvonne had three boxes with markers, a green one, a blue one, and a purple one. In the purple box, there were twice more markers than in the blue one. One day, Yvonne threw away nine markers from the left box. Then she put half of the remaining markers in the green box. Can you tell the color of the left box? Since Yvonne took the markers in the green box, it can't be green. If the purple box had twice more markers than the blue one, then the number of markers inside was even. If she had taken 9 out of the purple box, the number of the remaining markers would be uneven, and Yvonne wouldn't be able to take half of them to put in the green box. So, the left box was blue. Kai was spending the evening with her boyfriend Ronan at his place. They were eating popcorn, and a movie was playing in the background. Suddenly, Kai decided to trick Ronan. I bet there's a place in this room where I can sit and you can't, even if I get up. Ronan thought hard but couldn't figure out the answer. Then Kai showed him that the riddle did make sense. Where did she sit?
Kai sat on Ronin's lap. Hmm. An elderly lady had poor eyesight and needed assistance. She was living with her granddaughter, Cassie. One evening, Cassie was cooking dinner when she heard glass shatter. She ran into the room and asked what had happened. The window was broken. Her grandmother told her that some dark-eyed, dark-haired boy had thrown a stone into the window and then run away. Cassie didn't believe her. Why? The grandma had bad eyesight, but now she's not even wearing her glasses. So she could see neither the boy nor the color of his hair and eyes. Esme was walking in the forest, and you know what? She got lost again. As always, she found a witch's house and asked her to take her home. The witch had just invented a new game, but unfortunately, she had no partner. The witch said that if Esme won, she'd take her home. There were 37 matches on the table. Each player couldn't take more than 5 matches at once. The person who could take the last match would win. Esme could go first. What should her strategy be if she wanted to win? First, she should take one match. Then there are 36 left. After that, she should respond to each of the witch's moves by taking as many matchsticks so that when added up to the number the witch took was 6. Now, let's see if you can think outside the box. Mr. Adams opened the door, walked in, and shouted, Hi, honey, I'm home, to greet his wife, Mrs. Adams. She immediately responded, Hi, honey, I have dinner in the oven. Can you take a look at the kitchen clock and tell me what time it is? Mr. Adams immediately called the police and said that his wife was in danger. What's a possible explanation for how he managed to understand that? Mr. Adams was blind. His wife, of course, knew that. If she wasn't in danger, she wouldn't ask him something he couldn't possibly do. So there. 